In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a photograph of an artwork for publication, either as a poster or online or whatever. As you can see, I've already edited a lot of these photos, so you probably want to see me starting from scratch. So I'm going to click on this one and just hit the duplicate button. And it'll create another instance of the photo, but it will have the same it'll have the same history stack as the already uh, edited version. So I'm just going to click down here on original and you can see it'll revert the image back to how it was straight out of the camera. If you're photographing artwork, accuracy is your primary concern. So if you have one of these color checkers, which I'd highly recommend picking up, these things are amazing. These can be very helpful for getting the colors right because on the back of them, they'll give you the values. So in Darktable, on the left-hand side, there's a module called the Color Picker, where you can literally just drop it and click, and it will give you the RGB value. Chances are you're never gonna get this perfect, so don't be too obsessive over this, but it does help because I find certain cameras will tend to distort certain colors. Um, I find my camera is uh, particularly off when it comes to a lot of the purples and magentas. So you can tweak around with all the different settings to try to get this looking absolutely perfect or as close to it as you can. Let's just let's just pretend that's what a color chart is supposed to look like. I'm going to go back to the light table mode. I'm going to click on this file and I'm going to go over here to where it says history stack. And I'm going to click copy all. And now I'm going to click on the image that I wish to manipulate. I'm going to click on paste all. And what that does is it takes all of the color adjustments that I've done on this file and applies them to this file. If this image was shot under the exact same lighting conditions as the artwork itself, theoretically I should have perfect color in this file. When you're reproducing artworks, you're always going to have issues with color fidelity in the monitor or the prints or colors being out of gamut and just the nature of pigments versus four color print process. You're never going to get the same intensity you get with a genuine cadmium orange by combining magenta and yellow ink. It's just not going to happen. So I find rather than obsessing over getting all of the colors absolutely correct, it's more important to focus on the color relationships within the file itself. For this artwork, the most important striking element in it was the sort of interplay between the uh, cadmium orange and the cobalt teal. So these colors should both look really nice and intense. So I find the uh, color zones module is probably my favorite overall for this. Um, it has a little dropper tool which really helps you select things creatively. So I'm going to select some of this teal color. And you know what? By eye, this teal is actually slightly more green. So I'm going to switch from saturation. I'm going to click on hue. And you'll notice if I drag this up, it'll push the teal into a more magenta color space. Or if I go down, it will make it slightly more green. The cobalt teal is one of those colors that does look intensely vibrant uh, by eye, so I'm actually going to boost the saturation. So again, click to the saturation in the same module and turn that up a bit. What I've done here, I've actually made the image less accurate on absolute terms, but looking at the color relationships, it, it feels more true to the spirit of the original. However, the yellow doesn't look nearly as prominent in the actual artwork as it does in this photograph. So I'm just going to go back to the dropper tool. Sorry, I keep unclicking it. It stays, once you click it once, it stays on. Um, I'm adding more steps than I have to. So again, I'm going to use the scroll wheel to really shrink down this section. And I'm just going to turn down the saturation of the yellow just a little bit. And see, it's a very subtle change, but it, it just takes the edge off. All right, now lightness, darkness. Uh, when I look at this by eye, these sections in here almost read as complete blackness. So again, I'm going to select the color dropper and just set it down there. 
and realize, yeah, that's this image is quite a bit overexposed. Oh, that's too much. Maintain the highlights and midtones. And let's see. That is looking accurate to the original artwork. So now you've probably noticed that there's a lot of background showing and the artwork isn't straight. I, it's tilted, it's leaning, it's, you know, if you were to just crop that, it'll look like crap. One really easy way to correct for this is in the crop and rotate tool. Right underneath the angle, you'll see a mode called keystone. So if you click on that, it'll bring up a drop down for none, which is the default, vertical, horizontal, or full. I'm going to click full. And now it's drawn this box on the screen. So what you want to do is take each of these little red circles and put it on one of the corners of what you want to be perfectly square. Okay, so now that each of these lines up with the corner, I'm just going to click to another section and that should, uh, yeah, there we go. So now I've corrected the keystone distortion. Oh, uh, while you're doing this, be sure you click inside the little gray box that appears and not outside of it. Otherwise, you're just moving the box around. Of course, when you're doing this yourself, you'll want to show a little more caution and precision than I'm doing. If you don't want to be this sloppy, you can click on the mouse wheel to zoom in, and that'll help you get the corners a little more accurate. All right, so now I've got a nice clean crop of just the artwork. When you do the keystone correction, it actually does introduce a bit of uh, softness. So I'm just going to do the local contrast and turn that on. But I'm going to turn the detail down a little bit because I want this to be a fairly subtle ordeal. To me, that looks pretty accurate to the artwork. So again, as a quick review, if you're doing an artwork, if you have a color checker and precision of colors is important to you, for example, if you're doing a print production run, then you'll want to adjust all the colors using the color picker and your color chart. And then you use the history stack to save all your color adjustments and then apply them to the final image. When you're in the final image, you'll want to crop it and sharpen it and keystone adjust it. And that's and then maybe a little bit of curves to make sure the lightness is right. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, this image is now ready to export and post on your website or, you know, send to a printer. All right, there you go. Thanks for watching.